This is Chris Goldthorpe at ChessEducator.co and ChrisChess.com. I have many videos on YouTube. I have a whole series, one whole video on how each of the different pieces move. So I will see if I can put the URL for that piece up uh, on the video uh, for each piece. Now I'm going to show you how the pieces move. This is the rook. The rook moves horizontally or vertically. The bishop moves diagonally only, so it stays on the same color square. The queen can move like a rook or like a bishop. So this queen can move in any of these directions. Horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. The king also can move like a queen. That means horizontally or vertically like a rook or diagonally like a bishop. However, he only moves one square at a time so these are the only squares that this king could move to right now. He can move here, 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 or here diagonally forward or backwards, straight sideways, straight forward or backwards. But like a rook or a bishop, but only one square at a time. Okay, the knight is a little confusing. Whatever color square the knight is on, he's going to move to a square of the opposite color. He cannot move to any square right beside him. Remember that. So this knight on a white square is going to move to a black square. So he can move here. He can move here. He can move here. He can move here, he can move here, or here, or here, or here. People used to think of this as an L shape by going like this and like this to get to this square. Um, don't do that. Just see the knight where he can go in a single step. Look at this pattern and then watch the video on how the knight moves. The knight and the pawn are the more difficult pieces. Okay, now the pawn. Pawn's move is very simple. One square straight ahead in one direction only, like this. So this pawn can go here. That's it. Now, the pawn, if the pawn has never moved before, then the pawn has a choice of moving up one or moving up two. So this pawn could go here or here. But he cannot capture to either of those squares. All of the other pieces, if they can move to a square, then they can capture an enemy piece or pawn on that square. Whether the square is empty or, or inhabited by an enemy piece, this knight can move from here to here. It's not true with the pawn. The pawn's capture looks like this. This way. The pawn cannot move diagonally unless he captures. When he captures, he moves only forward, only diagonally, and only one square. So that's only forward, only diagonally, and only one square. So this pawn has two capturing squares, but there's no enemy piece over here. So he, this pawn has a choice. He can move straight ahead without capturing, or he could take the black pawn. This pawn, if it were black's turn to move, he could either move straight ahead, which for him is toward you, we're always looking at the board from the perspective of the white pieces. But this pawn cannot move here, but he could move here. Now there's a rule called en passant. The way en passant works is 
when your pawn is in your opponent's half of the board and your opponent makes a move that jumps over one of your capturing squares. Let's say he goes here. Okay, what do we have to make an, another move for white? So that it's white's, so that it's black's move. Let's say white goes here. Now, if black jumps over his capturing square, white has the option only for one this one move of going here on the next move. That's called en passant. Now let's look at how we win a chess game. You win a chess game by what is called checkmate. The idea of the whole game is to capture your opponent's king. You never actually do so. When the king is trapped so that it cannot avoid capture, then the game is already over. So let's say he goes here, and let's say white goes here, and black moves the queen like a bishop diagonally. Checkmate. And that, that's why it's attacking the king, because the queen can see the king. The rook moves this way, but there's a pawn in the way. This bishop can only go to these squares. This knight could go here or here. He's on black. He only goes to white. If the king moved here, he would still be in check from the queen. None of these pawns can go backwards. This pawn cannot move straight ahead to capture, nor can either of these pawns move backward or sideways. So this game's already over. That's a checkmate because black has attacked white's king, and white cannot escape the attack. So, of course, it is as if black is going to capture the king on the following move, but the game is already over, and both kings are on the board. Another common type of a checkmate called the scholar's mate that happens in games between kids uh, could go like this. He guards the pawn from the queen. Bishop comes out. Both the queen and bishop are attacking this square. Black goes here, hoping to capture the white queen. And white goes checkmate. checkmate because the queen can move like a bishop. The queen can also move like a rook. And the king cannot take the queen because the bishop is guarding it. That's called the scholar's mate. Okay, we need to know what check, checkmate, and stalemate are. If I attack a piece or a pawn of my opponents, it's not necessarily any big deal. If I go here, my rook is attacking the pawn. I wouldn't say that the rook is threatening the pawn because the knight is guarding it and the rook is worth more than a pawn. But the rook attacks the pawn. And if I capture this pawn, the game continues. If I move my rook here, if I move my rook here and then black takes the rook, well, yeah, black is winning here. But uh, the game's not over until I'm checkmated. The game continues. The king is never captured. So what is check? Check is when I move a piece so that it is ready to get the king. Check. Like this. So we'll add a, um, a piece to the mix here. There are three ways to get out of check take, block, or run. Uh, let's see, we'll uh, add another piece over here. Let's say I move my rook here and, oh, he doesn't like that. Yeah, because my, my king's in check. Okay, let's say I move check. my rook here. The king is in check because my rook is ready to go to this square. Take, block, or run. Black could capture the rook and would in fact be putting white in check if he did so here. Or he could block the check by putting a piece in the way. We call that interposing or he could move his king. When he cannot do any of those things, that is checkmate. Now the game does not always end as a win for one player. There are various ways of getting a draw which are covered in other videos that I've put up here on YouTube. But this is the basic moves of the pieces. This is something that you have to 
have completely thoroughly understood to move on. You still need to learn about castling. You need to learn about the various different ways of getting a draw, which includes stalemate, a draw by agreement, a draw by 50 move rule, a draw by insufficient material, um, and the mutual time forfeit doesn't work anymore. So um, thanks for watching.